Hi, good morning. Welcome back to the studio. I'm Chris Weston, and as for today, I'm here with offensive line coach and history teacher, Coach Levi Essies. How you doing? Good. How you doing, Chris? Good. So I just want to ask, ask you a couple of questions about, about teaching and then your coaching history. So, yeah, man. Sure. So what is your teaching philosophy? Uh, you know, teaching philosophy, uh, I think, can be a well-rounded question, uh, but I think the best way to answer that is uh, make sure the kids understand the content and uh, let them grow from it. You know, I think that growth in a classroom is one of the most important things you can have. Uh, and so measuring that at the beginning of the year and then testing again towards the end of the uh, year to see, you know, where that growth uh, was achieved mm -hmm. and how much growth there was. Um, and so I'm about trying to get those students to uh, grow in their studies of uh, world history. And I teach the ninth grade. Uh, world content and um, I think we've talked a little bit prior before about how unique that is looking at it from a uh, perspective of the world instead of just uh, the U.S. side of it. Absolutely and so we want our students to be well-rounded right so how would you encourage students to participate in activities outside of the classroom that relates to history? Um, I think one of the best ways to do it is uh, like watching films or documentaries or uh, even something as, as, as easy as like a trivia night somewhere, you know, things like that that you bring out history uh, and historical context um, is good for students, you know, and I think that uh, being able to um, do multiple things outside of the classroom that are school related are great. You know, you have four years of high school and uh, in those four years you got to do everything you can that you're interested in so you know what you want to do once you uh, graduate. That's right. That's right. I agree with that. And so what do you think is the most important thing that students need to learn about history? The most important thing, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest saying is like, we learn history so we don't repeat it, you know. Um, and so I think that that's important. But I also just think knowing where you came from or knowing your heritage and knowing uh, the past of what you, your country or your world even has uh, done and the things that have been accomplished throughout history and why we have certain things, you know, like all this mm -hmm. media stuff and all this technology that we have mm -hmm. didn't just come from anywhere, you know, it came from uh, inventions and um, things that people brought together to uh, bring in new technologies and, and how did people learn that and how did they uh, adapt and overcome and, and go through challenges that they face maybe uh, when trying to do that. Absolutely. And so which historical figure do you admire the most? My most admired historical figure uh, would probably be some kind of an athlete. But since I am a world history teacher, I want to tell you about my most, uh, my favorite uh, world figure. Um, and that's Hernan Cortez. Um, okay. Do you remember Hernan Cortez, Chris? No, sir. <laughs> Hernan Cortez uh, was uh, a conquistador, and he overthrew the Aztecs in Mexico. Uh, and I like him a lot because uh, he has the philosophy of the burn the boats philosophy. I'm sure you might have heard that before. But uh, he showed up on the shores of Mexico and had his men burn their ships so they had no way to escape. So their options were to win or die there was no retreating and so i think mm -hmm. that's a big motivational thing um and i think that's why hernan cortez is one of my favorite um, historical figures absolutely i agree hey history doesn't repeat itself so that's right so now on to football questions so at college which what position did you play at college uh when i was in college i played at uh bethel university which is a small nai school in northwest tennessee uh, i was an offensive lineman um, i was yeah. very fortunate to uh, win two conference championships while we were there. Uh, we, we went to uh, second round of the NAI playoffs one year, which was the furthest that uh, the school's ever been. Congratulations. Um, thank you. And so very fortunate to play on some successful teams uh, in high school and even in college as well. Congratulations. And so how do you deal with disrespectful players? Uh, you know, I think that uh, John Wooden said it the best. You know, every player... Um, is different and so every circumstance is different so I think that all types of um, punishable offenses are dealt with in a different way you know mm -hmm. um, each player has their own specific um, background and their own specific uh, way of processing things and so I think that each particular situation when 
there is something that arises that it is dealt with in a different way because you have to adapt to that specific student and that specific athlete. That's right. And so how do you keep the team motivated even before the game or after the game? Yeah. So, um, like I said, I've been on a lot of successful teams. Uh, I've been on coach four and been on teams that have, uh, you know, been one and nine and I've coached for a team that was 15 and 0 and won a state championship. So, um, you know, I think that the easiest way to keep motivation in either one of those seasons um, is to make it about the, the athlete, make it about the student athlete. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you make it about that specific person and, and you write down goals and you make them have a goal to where they uh, want to achieve it and make it mm -hmm. about them, then that keeps them motivated as well as personal motivation and team motivation. That's right. And so, so um, what is the best team that you work with in your career? Uh, the best teams that I've worked with, uh, you know, I think if you look at wins and losses, obviously the 15-0 team was the best win and losses record that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that every team's very different and very, very uh, intriguing in its own way. You know, um, mm -hmm. some of the best students that I've ever coached were on teams that maybe weren't the best uh, record, you know, or maybe in a very tough region or whatever it may be. And so I, I don't know if I have a favorite team that I've ever coached because um, I like to talk to those kids that I've coached in the past, even up to this day. You know, I still uh, have conversations once a week with uh, a student that I coached when I was in Tennessee. And so um, just I think that um, players make the, the team the, the best rather than the schedule and the record. I feel you. And so what is the main challenge that you have faced as far as career-wise, and how did you manage that? Uh, one thing is I've, I've uh, coached and taught in three different states, um, and I think one of the biggest challenges is uh, moving from state to state and understanding uh, maybe the small details of like what small rule change is different or what small um, acclimation period change is different or what um, is different about this state's uh, shoulder pad laws and helmet laws and things like that. I think that's one of the biggest challenges um, is, is when you do move around like I have uh, and, and having that diversity amongst it um, can, be, can be a challenge. I feel you. And on to our last question. Since football season lasted a month and now we're off to the off season, what are your expectations? Uh, I think the expectations for this off season here at Oak Mountain are just to get bigger, faster, stronger and uh, you know, come out ready to compete next year against whoever we our, our our ten game schedule, and you know, try to fight for that fourth spot, third spot, second, first spot to get in the playoffs next year. And that's got to be the motivation for um, every everybody that's out there. Um, and so, like I said earlier, about motivation is make it about them, let them su succeed and have their personal goals, and then add those team goals into it. And so, uh, I think that's the big thing for this off season is getting those goals set, and knowing where what direction the kids want to go in. Well, we wish you the best of luck, Coach Estes, and thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. And as for me, I'm Chris Weston. And as for Old Mountain Media, check out more on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and more.